What type of energy exchange happens during sex? Marilena writes, greetings. Greetings, Marilena. Tell us, please, what kind of exchange and energy exchange in particular occurs when people sleep together? What kind of mutual exchange takes place during sex? If one partner works on self-improvement and self-development, while the other does nothing in this regard, if one is healthier and has more energy than the latter, Would the energy flow from the one who has more of it to the other, where it's not enough? Well, actually, if partners have been together for a very long time, they, after a while, just like conjoined twins, become morphed together in some aspects of their personalities. If partners truly and sincerely love each other, their interpenetration becomes extremely deep, and more layers of their consciousness gets affected by this interpenetration. A plain sexual relationship even if it lasts for a while, usually affects the energy. At the moment of intimacy, partners become one, but only during that moment. When it's over, each partner basically remains with what he managed to take from it. Some manage to gain a little bit of strength, energy and health, while some manage to lose it. But energy recovery, just like its outflow, happens very quickly, since a person who gets intimate while lacking energy possesses a reason for this lack of energy, and this reason doesn't go anywhere. A person with a high energy level, after getting intimate, might feel like he was chewed up a bit, but soon enough his energy will get restored, as once again there is a reason, a major reason that constantly maintains his high energy level in a normal state, meaning that the recovery occurs very quickly, since this reason also remains to exist. Another thing is when partners begin to blend together informationally. They communicate a lot, they're present not only in the same space, but also in the same informational field together. They start sharing common situations, common interests, perhaps common values. And this information, these informational layers of consciousness, are the forest that directs the energy. Here an exchange takes place, and this exchange, of course, is not as fast and obvious as an energy exchange. But if such an exchange occurs, it cannot be reversed as easily, since there are different rules that apply to information and energy. And if energy works according to the rule, as much you give, so much you get, then information works according to a different rule, the more you give, the more you get. And in this sense, a person who works on self-development should not be afraid of passing the information to someone who doesn't do so. Because the same principle applies here. The more information he would give, the more he would get. First of all, he will get more free space to contain more information and therefore progress more in terms of his evolution. The information he passes along may also serve as a kickstart, or may, of course not, give the consciousness of the person who has less the one who doesn't work on self-development has a gap, a vulnerability inside, for example, an egregorial or religious attachment, which in a certain day, at a certain hour, simply extracts, removes an excess of seditious information out of him. In this case, no positive effect will be observed. Therefore, a person who is being close and pursues self-development should first of all protect the one he gives the information to in order to avoid a waste of his knowledge, information, strength, etc. Each layer of the subtle body has its own laws of energy exchange. We know that energy-based bodies, which include the physical, etheric, the astral bodies, are largely controlled by the laws of energy, namely the law of conservation of energy, the law of fast energy recovery, and so on. More informationally based bodies, which include the mental, causal, bodic, and the atmic bodies, in this case are more under the control of the person, he manages them. The mental, causal and buddhic bodies in particular. There is a different principle at work. The information you give doesn't go away, it is copied. Because if you tell something to your colleague, this doesn't mean that at that moment you forget what you've told her, since you don't cut the information while you transfer it from one carrier to another, you copy it. 
This means you will still have some free space left, because you have already manifested this information as available to be copied. You didn't lose this information. You didn't lose anything, but rather gained instead. You've gained another carrier who now possesses the given information. And now your information is twice as strong. And if the egregorial system won't extract this information from the one you copied it to, this information will become twice as powerful, which means that it becomes competitive. Information is the controlling force that doesn't allow energy to, for example, dissipate, or elsewhere allows it to be restored quickly. Whereas, on the contrary, a person who is sick, apathetic, who loses energy rapidly, should look into his own consciousness and ask himself, what type of information within my consciousness makes me constantly lose energy? After all, something makes me, I don't know, maybe being scared, frightened, simply compels me to eat the wrong type of food, that don't give me any energy, but only cause me harm. And this something is within my consciousness. Find the cause, and you will solve this problem.